Michael Rote with Paul Brain Creative and the Braincast, and I'm here with Roselle of Bistro 6050. Good afternoon. Oh, hello. Good afternoon, <laughs> sir. Came to light with you guys. You you uh, catered for the axe throwing competition. That's where I think I first really met you guys through the Six Corners Association. Um, how long have you actually been living here? Actually, Bistro 6050 has been open for one and a half years and we are a fully fledged um, resident of Portage Park and the Six Corners for four years now as of today actually. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. So you've really seen, so that was before this neighbor, this block was really anything, right? You guys have helped, you've been a big contributor to develop this. Oh, we are one of them because uh, there was already a percolator and the thrift and fry and those folks, uh, they're really working hard to revive our mm -hmm. neighborhood. And we are, we just came at the right time to be. So they've been helping, the percolator folk have been helping change. Uh, have been helping uh, this neighborhood to be resuscitated according to Mr. Chris Tuade, my partner in life and in business. <laughs> good. Um, so congratulations though, that's uh, good timing or not, it's still a remarkable thing to to take a bet and a gamble on a place that's not fully developed, but to invest in the community. And I think that's part, I know that Chris, being more of the outside person, um, tries to get around to a lot of events just to make sure that you got all community sponsored, just to make sure that you guys are actually helping the community, right? Exactly. Um, so you, if I remember from before, would you say you get a lot of regulars from the community here? Oh yes, we, we made actually not only customers, but very good friends. They, they just don't come here just to buy something. They actually come here to, to talk, mm -hmm. to gossip a little bit, <laughs> and to connect with the, with the other members of the community. So you are, so this is the rumor mill. Does all rumors start here? Oh, just not really. <laughs> well, depends. You never know. Okay, But don't say that. They won't come here anymore. I know. Uh, well, that's good, though. I mean, because I think the other day when I was in here, it was a bunch of, it was grade school kids, right? But then you also, so it's family friendly, obviously. Um, yes. Grade school, older folk, right? I mean, do you, you kind of get the gamut of the whole neighborhood here? Yes, I do. I think it's because uh, of the atmosphere. It's very, like you said, family, family friendly. And we are not really uh, like stiff. Mm -hmm. We make friends, we, we greet them by their name. We know what they need, what they want. And we are just very friendly. Like I am their older sister or mother mm -hmm. or maybe grandmother, I don't know. <laughs> Is this your first business that you started? Actually, no. I used to operate uh, a food courtyard mm. in Kathmandu. It has 10 um, outlets, like mm. 10 restaurants in there. So my job is to, to keep the place for them. Let's say for the dishwashing, I take care of it, the waiters, the, the accounting. So that was that's currently or that's what you Oh, before we uh, before we came here to oh, the okay. United States. So, well, that's so. How long were you doing that? Uh, for two years, two actually. Years. Before that, I used to design clothes and jewelry. So it's just the same job as I have now. I'm designing recipes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's exactly the same. So you're a true artist. You just it doesn't matter your medium. You can just pick up new things, uh, and you're curious, and then could you explore. Could be, could be, but uh, I'll call you one. You yeah, don't have to agree you. with it. <laughs> um, are you more of a sweet or a savory? What do Actually, you prefer? I, I must tell you I'm a very picky eater and I'm very <laughs> difficult. That's why maybe it shows in my work. <laughs> but uh, I don't get all the credits. I, when I make a recipe, first, I, of course, I do it in my kitchen. Mm -hmm. And then if according to me it's good enough, that's the time I taste this to the customers. So it's not only my creation, it's the creation of, of everybody. That's why whenever we have something, you know, we're selling it here, it's always a winner because it's the collaboration of many people. It's not only by me. 
I totally agree. That's that's a wonderful way to roll out new things because then you can get your real time feedback and your exactly. And that's uh, actually R and D is the most expensive part of creating a of a new product. Right. So if you have that immediate gratification or like response, then it yeah. saves you so much more headaches. Exactly, <laughs> and the customers are actually very happy because they are part of the creation of something, and they love that. Mm -hmm. And many customers, uh, they pushed me so hard <laughs> to create something for you know what they like. For example, there's one police officer. He comes here like every two days. When are you going to make my raspberry ice cream? <laughs> I said, sir, okay, okay, I'm just busy. And then I asked him, why are you? Why do you like raspberry so much? Because he said that nobody makes raspberry ice cream anywhere anymore. Oh, really? And yes. And I said, I asked why. And he said, oh, because they said it doesn't sell well. I said, okay, sir, it doesn't matter whether it sells well or not, but just to please you, I will make <laughs> it for you. So I called him after two weeks, and he and his wife came here to test it, and right. now I have an order of one and a half gallon of that raspberry. <laughs> so I call that flavor raspberry lovers. <laughs> so you're a wordsmith and a, and a food artist. <laughs> oh, thank you. But... We need that. We need humor in, in life, you see, because everybody here so, you know, could be grumpy. But right. if you just try to, to scratch them a little bit, then <laughs> they become friendly, actually. And people are actually really nice. You just have to. There's usually a layer. Yes. Once you get through the layer, you see everyone is re usually really nice. Exactly. Sometimes it takes me weeks before I get off the layer. But From once somebody. I get the layer off, they're here every day. That's good. See, you, you know how to work. You, ha you know how to be nice to people. So I think that shows, that's clearly why I think it's such a f fun atmosphere. Hearing you talk, it's the exact, uh, the exact atmosphere that I'm looking at is just fun and playful and friendly. Like, I remember Chris was telling me about your cappuccino cups that you save to re basically represent Italy. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Do you want to talk a little more about those, like what you do? To oh, because we have a very, um, how do you say, uh, a nice guy who is part of the, who is from the community and he likes drinking espresso. And one day he asked me, why don't you have a, you know, a, a ceramic cup? So anyway, we told him, why don't you bring your own ceramic cup? Ah. And then that's why he always, he already, he brought his over here, and every time he gets a shot or double shot of espresso, then he uses he his uses cup. His. So coffee shop is just part of the thing. You guys offer more food than a traditional coffee shop, right? Let me correct that. Actually, we are not a coffee shop. We are not a restaurant. We are sort of in the middle. We could actually call ourselves a snack bar. Okay. So what does that mean to you? Snack bar means, to me at least, it's a, a place where you can go and just grab a bite, a fast one, but it has to be very good and delicious and mm -hmm. affordable. So homemade, not just a bag of chips, but exactly. just something as, to use your art, artistry to develop it. So what are, you offer empanadas. Yes, sir. You offer charcoal nuts. Yes. You offer ice cream. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite? My favorite, like I said earlier, I'm a sort of complicated person <laughs> and I'm not satisfied with one thing. That's why I have to do a lot of things. But if you, uh, if you really want me to answer that, okay, <laughs> I'll say here, ice cream. You like it? Yeah. What's your flavor? Do you have one? My favorite flavor? Oh, that's tough. Mm, okay, I'm creating a new one. <laughs> it's called Chokov Magnet Chip. So what's in there? Ooh. Chocolate, coffee, macadamia, Nutella, and chocolate chip. Ooh. So if you like all those things, that's the ice cream you have to get as well. That sounds really good. You have it now or you're making it? I actually have it ready, but the recipe is sort of 98% mm -hmm. perfect. It's not good enough yet. So by the time, this will be a couple of weeks, so maybe someone will come in. It might be ready by then. Exactly, tomorrow, I promise. <laughs> so, there's time. How many flavors do you typically keep on hand? 
when I create a, when I create a flavor, it should be available all the time. Because when a customer comes, I don't want them to be disappointed. Right. Oh, sorry, I don't have it today. But of course, sometimes it happens. But at least there are other options. So for now, I have 18 flavors. But my plan is to have 101 flavors. Wow. Because I would like <laughs> our area, the Portage Park, or the Six Corners, to be in the map for ice cream in the United States or even the world. That this place can create a very good ice cream. I believe it. That's interesting. Um, that's a cool goal, too. I think you can achieve it. Uh, Thank you. Have you ever, this might be once you get all 100, have you considered doing an ice cream challenge? Uh, not yet. But uh, what do you think is that? They, what I should do? There's, I know there's a couple places that do, you do like 10 scoops, you know, for like $30. Some ridiculous, but then you get a shirt. If you can eat oh. it all and then you can put people's pictures up, if wow. they do it, that might be one, because th then you sort of can help create the, the buzz. Yeah, the buzz and the intrigue and the prestige around the ice cream. And so that might be a fun. That's a very good <laughs> idea, actually. But first, let me complete my flavors. <laughs> Maybe not 100. Let's say 30 of them. 30. To be able to say that we have. We are an ice cream place. Mm -hmm. I think still with 18, that's respectable. That's, that's an ice cream place if, if I ever heard one. Really? I think because so. in other places, uh, I, I check uh, reviews on the internet. When they have even 30 uh, flavors or less, they say it's not an ice cream place. Really? Yes. <laughs> I read a lot of reviews. <laughs> well, don't because they'll be, they can push you too, too far in a, in a negative way. <laughs> Perhaps, uh, yes. <laughs> what do you love more, empanadas or crepes? Um, for creation part, it's the empanada. But for the work part, just crepe. Because the empanada is a very tedious work. It's actually, you, people think it's just that easy, but no. Right. Mm, that is a very, very difficult job. The most expensive part of the empanada is not actually the inside, you know, the meat and the like. It's the dough because of the labor. Really? Oh, because it takes a long time. It takes a long time to, to make it. It's very tedious. Is it, do you have to let it rise like three times or something? Or is it just oh, no. as fine as you need to roll we, it it's, out? Kind it's of just thing? like uh, making a pie dough. Oh, and then filling it and then exactly. all the pinching and all the. No need even to pinch. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> okay. All right. So empanada. So then coming up with those, you that's just where you explore you kind of eat you look at your five or six flavors that you have and you say "Ooh, this is what else I would like how do you come up with new flavors oh okay that's easy <laughs> well really not easy uh, it's because of some customers let's say I have one guy he said uh, can you please make me a cheese empanada I said sir our cheese empanada has ham please just remove it I said, okay, sir, just for you, I will do it. So, <laughs> actually, this empanada has been born because of him. I call it no ham, just cheese. And <laughs> now it's a hit with kids. So that's our 12th flavor of empanada. Okay. So customers, in addition to your influence of what you want to taste. Yes, because if you are in business, you have to listen to the customers. Yes. Because they are the ones that will make you. Mm -hmm. It's not you, only yourself. Well, it's 50-50, but more on the customers. Right. It's like a marriage. <laughs> yes. It's, it's so this, <coughs> these are the symbols that you use on your empanadas, right? Yes, so sir. How did this come about? Actually, um, before I do something, I go around, uh, let's say, other places to eat. I check out what they do and how they do it. R &D. Sort of a spy. Right. <laughs> and like I said earlier, I read a lot of review, reviews from Google or Yelp, and I see what is all what is usually the problem in the business. So I notice with the empanada, obviously you don't know what is in there once it's, it, it is already closed. Right. So I have to think of some way that it is kid friendly and anyone can remember and easily recognize. So that's why I thought about uh, the shapes. I used to make, 
well, pies at home. And then I have a lot of these little cutouts, you know, these mm -hmm. little shapes. So I said, why not put this? There you go. That's how it was born. They uh, say it's a very good idea, but I say it's genius. <laughs> well, not me. The customers even said that. <laughs> it is genius. I didn't know. Th that was one of the first things that when I, when I um, had it the first time, I didn't, I didn't realize it took me a minute that you were actually using a symbol and a key to code them, but it's genius. It oh, is genius. Thank you. <laughs> because when we do something here at Bistro 6050, we think uh, on the end of the customer, what would they think? And also, of course, how we can do our job faster. Yeah. Because the food or whatever you're ordering from here, how, how long the customer can get it, it should be quick, very mm -hmm. fast. But of course, not very pa fast that it's from the bag right. that I bought outside. <laughs> fast, but good. Exactly. It's kind and of homemade. The, yeah, homemade, fast, good. That kind of puts it in a nice little box, but at least you know, you know, because then it's got to be easy. It's got to be exactly. accessible. And, and not only that, because uh, there are customers who have allergies and they're oh, very yeah. precise. You have to be very precise if you are in the food business. Right. Otherwise... No way. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. So have you guys ever considered doing a dessert empanada with some of your ice cream on top of it? Um, like a chocolate empanada, chocolate was, and strawberry with like ice cream on top? I was thinking about that, but uh, for the moment, the ice cream is my, is my um, number one goal because he, I remember it's still 100, 101 flavors. Gotcha. I only have 18. So that's how many more months of work? Right. A lot. A lot. <laughs> but so far I have already 12 empanadas. You only see nine. But so far I have 12. That's good. And so these nine, these are the regulars or all 12 are the regulars? All 12 are regulars. Like I said in the beginning, once we release a product, you it should stay. Is there anything else that makes your empanada special in Chicago? Perhaps yes, it is baked. Because most of the empanadas are, are fried and many people now are staying away from too much oil. Mm -hmm. So we made it baked. So a slight health conscious, slight paying attention to the customer. So I know you, you go on a lot of covert R&D missions where you're tasting all the different foods at other places. Yes. Do you, do you have a couple, do you have uh, spots here in Portage Park that you love, that you go to regularly? You know CTA, uh, Chicago Taco Authority. Mm -hmm. He sees me there every Sunday. <laughs> and he asked me, why are you here every Sunday? You know, it's R&D time. And he said, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> so you doing R&D in my place? A little bit. <laughs> Well, that's what it takes. It takes other artists to inspire you to push yes, you forward. So exactly. I have been to several places in the neighborhood. Let's say Poretta, Eris, uh, Burger Belly, Josie's Frozen Yogurt, Chelita's Ice Cream. You've explored. <laughs> yes. The charcoal nuts. Let's start with these. So what are mild and wild? <laughs> I love those names. So wh how did those come about? Just more... Oh, I was thinking of a snack which is easy to grab and that doesn't spoil right away and healthier. So I thought of something that uh, has something to do with nuts. But no peanuts, okay? These are oh, wow. with almonds, cashews, walnuts, and pecans. So allergy proof? Is that the right? Allergen? Allergen free? Well, because mostly allergen mostly free? Mostly because, so, but some people are allergic to tree nuts right so peanuts at least okay well that's very nice that's very forward thinking of you i am definitely a fan of peanuts but i oh. still like this <laughs> uh so what about the drinks that you create so those are like milkshakes or oh yes uh actually i created one milkshake last year it's called the nutella milkshake and one lady uh, wrote about it uh, in Urban Matter, and it's one of the top 10 Nutella dishes in Chicago. Really? Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And <laughs> I have a lot of kids coming for that, well, not really every day, but 
most of the time after school. R frequently enough that you do yes. notice them coming. And yeah. if you add an, a shot of espresso, it becomes an adult milkshake. Oh, wow. That's <laughs> that sounds dangerous, oh. <laughs> but amazing. And there's another milkshake I created. It's Ube Freak Milkshake. Ube is uh, like a root crop of purple potato from the tropical countries. Hmm. Um, actually, it was created because one of my customers, he insists that all the taro drinks around here, not, in, uh, not only my place, it's sort of milky. So he was telling hmm. me, why don't you create one like you can use this, that, uh, flavoring, whatever. And I was thinking while he was talking to me, um, oh, I already have those ingredients. So, okay, I tested it, and actually it's, it's a hit. A lot nice. of people are coming for that as well. So you just keep put, putting out new stuff and people love it. That's like great. Like I said, it's collaboration with, right. the, with everybody. It's not by me alone. Right. right. I'm, I'm trying to give you more credit than you want. Oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh, so, and then crepes. Mm -hmm. You make those. What's the difference from our crepes to others? Yes. Actually, we call it French velvet crepes. Why velvet? Because the texture is like velvet. You know the fabric velvet? It's mm. like that. Usually crepes are crunchy and hard, but ours are not. Oh, nice and soft and... Nice and soft, fluffy, <laughs> like a teddy bear. <laughs> So, like him. <laughs> yeah. So this might be a who, which child do you love the most quote? But do you love your empanadas or ice cream or crepes most, or can you not choose? Um, do you like them all? I think ice cream. Ice cream. Because ice cream is eaten by like almost uh, of the seven billion population of the world. But empanadas are sometimes people, they don't eat that. Right. But in you like ice cream more or you like empanadas more? I'm just saying personally, like what you'll have. It depends. If I'm hungry, yes, I will go for empanadas. <laughs> okay. I can respect that. Yeah, I love a good ice cream. <laughs> um, so 18 flavors. You got the winter coming up, so you'll be able to test. Oh, exactly. I already have actually five uh, coming out this week. Good for you. Five flavors. Do you want to give any, um, so this will be, so they'll have been out by the time this comes out. What are the, do you know the flavors off? Oh, okay. I have an original flavor. It's called Cereal K. Combination of a little bit of strawberry, the mm. Kellogg's, cornflakes. Uh, that's it. Okay. It's very good, actually, because people like to eat cereal in the morning. Right. And ice cream is made of milk sort of dairy so it's like you're eating breakfast while eating your right. ice cream <laughs> well it's like ice cream with the cone in it uh, yes basically so that's i'm into i'm into all the weird texture stuff in ice cream i think it's that's what's fun about it you can play with it all okay so we've covered a lot of ground actually with all your so the drinks the milkshakes the empanadas the crepes the ice cream so you guys are doing a good job of keeping a lot of the good press and props for getting all the good press. So one third cafe, one third world market, and one third snack bar. Does that feel like a good representation of what you'd call yourself? Uh, yes, why not? <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> uh, what about Pan Global? I think that's the way you've kind of been referred to lately. Actually, the, that lady got the point because actually there are a lot of good flavors around the world. Mm -hmm. And I think the best, one of the best medium to show it is in ice cream. Mm. That's a good, I like that. Mm. So this was also, what was this article? The absolute best ice cream shop in every state, which you guys got, right? For Illinois, yes. That's we are the representative for Illinois. See, that is really impressive. Especially, you said a year and a half you've been open. Yes. Um, so, I mean, this is just such a great, great... Oh, so they came to this through Yelp, which is uh, basically the um, peer-reviewed winner. So I think that's a good start. Now all you need is your, your silly challenges. Yes. <laughs> where people got to eat 12 scoops of ice cream <laughs> in an hour. 
Actually, <laughs> I will tell you a story that nobody knows. Okay. Even Mr. Chris doesn't know. Before I saw this article about the best ice cream in Illinois, actually, I cried like two nights before I saw this article. I was telling myself, oh, no one is even paying attention to my, wow. to my work. And so unfair. I work even until 4 a.m. in the morning just to fix some recipes or to make something. And then I decided after two days, why don't I check? Because every night before I go to sleep, I check the internet for hmm. maybe someone wrote about us. And this I got. And I said, okay. So if you really work hard and you are very honest with your work, and if you love your customers, mm. then someone will, will, will spot you. Someone will recognize you. So the recipe is just be true to yourself and just work hard and just be honest. That's all. Then someone will, will find you. Maybe it will not be right away, but mm -hmm. I'm sure one day. <laughs> First, I wanted to say thank you for sharing the original story. Oh. And I'm glad that they did find you. You know, oh, that's thank uh, you. it is tough. Like, and that's the thing, the creator's life. For so long, you feel like you're in the void and no one's, you know, you're just so isolated working on your product and it's hard to get feedback. Exactly. So, so it, yeah, so good. I'm glad you got a little bit of recognition because that's, it's good. Because that probably helped keep propelling you forward and motivating and doing more flavors and just reinvigorating. Exactly. It's really tough, huh? especially if no one pays attention to your work, especially if you really do it very well. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, so the, I noticed the roast beef sandwich on the wall. What's the story behind that? Okay. There are several customers who came here. Uh, what do you have to eat here? I said, we have empanadas. And he told me, um, but I cannot eat empanadas every day. Can you maybe create a sandwich or actually <laughs> hamburger? I said, okay, sir, I'll try. It took us uh, more than a month to, to, have, to have this food over here. Because first I have to look for the meat, the right bread, mm -hmm. what is the uh, formula for a very good sandwich. Well, according to us. Actually, for example, the roast beef sandwich has 13 layers, including the bread. Wow. 13? Yes. That's impressive. <laughs> and then uh, we, we, we thought about a sauce that you cannot find anywhere. Mm -hmm. It has a special sauce. That's, that's why it's, they say it's different. To be take your spin on it. Exactly. When we make an empanada, there are three criteria. Okay. First of all, it should not be dry. It should be fluffy, mm -hmm. the inside. Oh, okay. That's why. Because you, you have to like whip the meat. Not only that, <laughs> but you, you have to add stuff to make it a good empanada. Right. That's why they say we have one of the best empanadas because of those three things. It should be there. Hmm. Did not even mention the third. <laughs> well, and I didn't know that either, so I'm glad that you, you mentioned that because what were your ice cream rules when you're creating a new flavor? Do you oh, have yeah, yeah, yeah. Ice cream rules. <laughs> okay. When we, okay. When we do ice cream here, mm -hmm. the, the, what, okay, what's the difference of our ice cream from other places? Yes. What's the difference our of your ice cream? Our ice cream is very creamy. The sugar content it's just enough. It doesn't need to be overloaded with sugar. And it has a lot of flavor. It should have the flavor. For example, if I have to do a Biscoff, you know, the Belgian biscuit mm -hmm. ice cream. Actually, we have, we have that ice cream. It should, it should taste exactly as the biscuit. Right. Those are the three rules of ice cream making. So, exactly. So, it's got to taste exactly like what it's copying it's or exactly. what it's being um, but it's just in ice cream form right that's a fun r d <laughs> delicious and very expensive <laughs> yeah and expensive <laughs> so you guys do bubble tea bubble tea actually nowadays it's not like the original bubble tea because the original bubble tea is really made with real tea brewed tea and with um milk 
and they just put those round stuff they call tapioca but mm -hmm. nowadays it's popping boba like we use here but now anything with the bubbles or the round stuff under the cup is called bubble tea whether it's tea or not uh, so people are using the balls as the signifier versus exactly. how it's actually made exactly gotcha. that's how we do it in the United States <laughs> yeah <laughs> that sums it up <laughs> um, so you do soups we now that it's winter soups. time, especially. So soups, can you tell me how you make those? Actually, Bistro 6050 serves soups as well. We have uh, three flavors of soups now. I have uh, an original beef flavor. The next one is the mushroom with coconut milk, which is actually mm. a vegan. I made it into vegan because I have several customers here they cannot eat uh, mm -hmm. pasta in the soup. So I removed it and I put more mushroom and they're very happy. Yum. And the third one actually was made for the summer. It is called the uh, gazpacho ah. on the rocks. <laughs> it is made with red bell pepper, guava, uh, watermelon, there's mild curry, wow. there's paprika. So people think those flavors, they will not go together, but actually it's very good. Probably a lot of testing to make sure. Exactly. Because it's fine on how much you want to, yeah. Well, good. So that's a lot of time for you to kind of perfect. And then what are you doing for the winter? For the winter, actually those soups will stay here. Those will stay. All those soups. Actually, we need seven soups. Why seven? So you can come here every day. <laughs> you take one soup a day. So the next flavor will be the Hellenic chicken soup. Why hmm. Hellenic? Because it's Greek, it has feta cheese. Oh, uh, Mediterranean, very Mediterranean. Mediterranean style. I gotcha. So yeah, ice cream. So you have, we're coming into the winter, cold month, not as ideal, but it's still a good time to have ice cream all year round. Yes, um, sir. What, so you have the five new flavors coming out, right? Mm -hmm. That's what we said. Um, one which was the strawberries and cornflakes um, the choco McNut chip oh yeah that one sounds really good raspberry lovers the raspberry raspberry good so the lovers and the raspberry good are two different ones yes nice what's the big difference between them is there like a certain the raspberry lovers is just plain raspberry the raspberry good, it will have uh, pieces of raspberry with cho dark chocolate. Ooh, sounds really nice. <laughs> and then what's the, what was the last one? Or is that all five? Four. There's one more. Um, the red bean, the red bean ice cream. Interesting. What's that? That's red beans and? Just pure red bean. Really? It's a, uh, red bean is um, eaten as a dessert in Southeast Asia. Is there like vanilla flavors on top of that or is it it's just the red bean ice just cream? Just the red bean ice cream. Interesting. No vanilla. Yeah, sorry to assume vanilla, but well, cool. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you, <Bought> Roselle. For my <laughs> no, yeah, that's this would be a good campaign thing. Thank you, Roselle and Chris for having me here at Bistro 6050, which 6050 Irving Park Road. That's the address. West Irving, west Park. Irving Park Road, just west of Austin, next, next to, to the, the uh, next to the library. Um, perfect to come right after. Probably not with books, but after you get books, after or after a movie at the patio. So you collaborate with them mm -hmm. for free movie tickets. How does that work? Uh, for our, uh, they give us tickets to give to our customers. So patio will have an audience whenever they have a film mm. and in return for that um, we make a raffle draw let's say they have to put the half of the stub in one bag and then the patio people will do the raffle and then they will win something from Bistro 6050. Oh cool so that's another great way that you're helping the community and help a a once thriving theater hopefully get back on its feet kind of thing so uh, Six Corners Association and Chicago 
<laughs> and bistro6050.com is the website. Isn't that uh, what it is? Yes, sir. And then charcoalnuts.com. I know you guys are rolling out your for those snacks. Oh, we open um, Monday, Tuesday from 4 to 10.30 p.m. Wednesday and Thursday, 12 to 10.30 p.m. Friday and Saturday, 12 until 11 p.m. And Sunday, 12 until 7 p.m. Because I need to sleep a little bit. <laughs> Just a little though. Not too much. <laughs> Can't have you get rested. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Well, thank you so much. I appreciate you spending the time. And, thank um, you as well. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Very good. See you around. <laughs> Bye. See you at Mr. <laughs> 6050. Come on, let's eat. What would you like? You want a hamburger? No, I don't do burgers, but I do. Oh, you're vegetarian. Oh. I do Okay, veg. panada. So is it good enough, the cheese? It is great. Is that chive? No, parsley. Parsley. There's a lot of things there. People think it's just cheese. I don't do that. I want complicated stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Would you say 13 layers for the roast beef? Okay, 13 bread. levels? I see bread, the sauce, pickles, cheese. Let's say the pork beef example. 